um, client services person. So we are going to go through kind of how best to use your account. Um, today we have Jeremy Anderson, who is our Director of Client Services, and Karen Marcy, who is also another Client Services and Support uh, person, who will be going through and will be talking about the advanced search options, how to best target your search, and the best practices for using that, and then how to set up your resume profile, and why you would do that, and how to get the best results from setting that up. So we will go ahead and get started with the advanced search option, and Karen will be showing us how best to use that. Great. Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on the advanced search. This is really good for helping you narrow down uh, your job search and doing some manual searches on your own. So this slide here actually details all of the fields that you are able to fill out. We'll actually go to the live site so we can kind of work through uh, the advanced search, and we'll kind of cover that slide in the same time. So when you join and you log on to the site, you'll come to your FlexJobs homepage. This is the first page. You'll see it's your message inbox on the top, your new jobs of interest, um, today's tip, job search activity. Um, and then below there, you'll see where any resume profiles that you have set up are listed, as well as your skills test. Um, and if you look to the right-hand side of the site, where it says Related Job Search Options, that's where you'll find the Advanced Search. So we can click on Advanced Search. And this is what the page looks like. So what we'll do, we'll just work through all the fields here, give you some tips and pointers. Um, the first thing that I want to point out is you'll see a little blue box at the upper right of each field. And if you, when you're on the site, if you put your cursor over that, it'll bring up that little pop-up box which will give you tips for searching. Um, and it's above each one. So if you have any questions, just put your, your cursor there. If you need a refresher, um, you can look at that little tip bar. We'll start off with the keyword um, field in the upper left. This is um, something that you want to play around with. What our system will search for is the exact word that you put in. So you don't want to limit yourself. Um, you know, and what you're searching for, and I think a good example is if you put um, the word blogging, if you're interested in blogs and blogging, if you type that in, and then just, if you just want to run the search down there on the bottom, that blue box, our system is going to search exactly for that word. So in the upper left there where it says job search results, you'll see 1 to 50 of 106 different jobs. So that was just for the word blogging. So just if you go back to the advanced search, thank you. And instead of putting blogging, if you put blogger, so you want to be a blogger and you run the search with that word, you'll see your results are dramatically different. You only have one of 28. So that's just something to keep note on. Play around with that keyword. Um, if you you know you can certainly search for any exact word you're looking for but you don't want to exclude yourself from any, any jobs that you might be looking for. OK, just so we can go back to the advanced search. And just to the right of the keyword is the exclude words. Um, again, and same thing, if you, whatever word you want to exclude, say there, we do have a travel box, but if you want to exclude where it says travel, you can put that word in there as well. Um, anything that you do not want to see in your results. But again, it's something you want to play around with as well. Um, and then next on the lower right is your US location. And here you want to type in your city. You can type in your city, your state. You can put a zip code. You can put a region. Um, we'll put in Denver, Colorado. So that's going to help our system when you put in your location. It's going to allow our system to search within the state that you're in. Um, because we do have jobs all over the country and some anywhere in the world, it will also pull in those search results as well. So one thing to note here while we're on this page, if next to each job you'll see some symbols. So the first one you see the Canadian flag. If you ever have any questions about what the symbols are, if you put your cursor over it, it should pull down a drop-down box to tell you what it means. 
Um, the little blue and green is the world as well, just if you scroll down towards the bottom right of this page, there will be, there should be, our icon guide that will tell you what the symbols mean as well and where you need to be living or able to work for the jobs that are posted. There it is where it says job is open to, and then it has the symbols candidates everywhere, candidates in the US, um, Australia, Canada, India, UK, as well as we have the red balloon, which is a, a specific city or state. The blue balloon is a specific region. So it could be northwest, southwest, et cetera. So that's just something to keep in mind. And you'll see we have Denver, Colorado jobs. Um, there's some as well as American flag jobs. So those are jobs that, that, you know, living in Denver, Colorado, you could apply for if you wanted to because they're available to anyone within the United States. If you see the American flag and the red balloon, it could mean that the company is really looking for someone in a specific location, but for the right candidate, they would choose someone from anywhere in the United States. So that's just a little information on the symbols that you'll next, you'll see. You'll also see, and Jeremy will talk about this a little bit more when we go into the resume profile, um, right under the company name of that first one, Cactus Communications, there's an FJ. That is a featured employer. That's a company who's come to us directly to post their jobs. Um, so that will be the symbol that you'll see to know it's a featured company. All right, Jess, if you want to go back to the advanced search. As well as looking for a specific city or state, if you do not live within the United States, you can also select a specific country. Now this drop down box, um, one of your first jobs is anywhere. Those are jobs that can be done from anywhere in the world. Um, there are a handful of those on our site. You can also choose any country you may be looking for. So that one there is pretty self-explanatory. And then our next box that we'll talk about is the job types. This is where you can choose um, if you're specifically looking to work as a freelancer of an actual employee of the company, volunteer, internship, or temporary, you can select those. And just to the right of there would be your work schedule. So if you're looking for a full-time, part-time, flexible schedule, alternative schedule, what that means is nights and weekends, um, so something a little bit different, occasional, seasonal, long-term and short-term. Again, that one's pretty self-explanatory as well. And then your career level, we have entry level all the way up to executive level jobs. So you can search through those. A little tip on here, if you're at an executive level and if that's the only type of job you want, certainly pick executive level. But it doesn't hurt to also search through um, the manager level jobs um, and vice versa. If you're a manager, it doesn't help to search in the management level as well as experienced because you could find some results within just one drop down lower that could be at your level. Um, so it's a good good thing to play around. But if you're sure, you know, if you're for sure you only want experienced or executive, certainly pick that. Um, but I would suggest playing around with that one as well. Um, the box to the right, the next box over is something that we talk about a lot because a lot of people use us for telecommuting jobs. So here is where you can filter out um, the results that you don't want to see. A lot of people want 100% telecommuting, which is completely from your home. You're not going into the office. So you can select that as well as mostly telecommuting. Maybe you're, you know, you're at home four days a week and in the office one. Um, some telecommuting or option for telecommuting. Some companies have the option, maybe they'll have you start off in the office and then release you to work at home. So you want to be mindful, you know, when you're selecting your level of telecommuting, if that's something that you're looking for. And then the next box down, the categories. In this box, um, when you click the category box, it will pull our, all the categories that you can choose from. So you can pick as many as you'd like, um, just if you want to Click, kick, bleh, sorry, pick a couple of there. You'll just continue to put your, you know, once you've clicked on one, you'll just select that box again. And you can go through and choose any of the categories that you want. 
Um, there's main categories and then there's subcategories under the main categories. Like you'll see account management there has client services as a subcategory. If you want both, that'll give you the widest results. If you only want client services, choose client services. Um, and again, it's something to play around with to see the types of results if they're really what you want. You can always change them and update them. So you have the option to select more than one. You can select only one if, if that's the only area you're looking at. No problem with that at all. And then the next box over I kind of spoke about earlier is the travel box. You can choose if you um, want to travel, if you may want to travel, or absolutely you don't. That will filter out those results. And then the page, uh, the, the box below, the final box on the right is the featured and award-winning employers. Again, featured employers um, that I touched on before are companies that have come to us specifically to post their jobs. And the award-winning employers, those are companies that we have on our site who've won these special awards. So they've been noted for those. You can search that way. One thing that we recommend, um, we talked with a lot of people about is um, just for a general good search to put in your U.S. location. Um, so just let's try one. Let's try Denver again. And then selecting a telecommuting level. Um, let's do 100% since a lot of people are looking for 100%. And then we'll pick a job category. So this is going to give us really wide results for us to look at. Um, Writing, great, and then we'll search for jobs. So here again, we're going to see jobs that can be done from anywhere as well as in our particular location. Um, as you're looking through here, so, and you can narrow down, you can add more fields to that advanced search. Another thing to note on the right hand side, you'll see, um, just if you want to go up a little bit, under search for jobs, that blue bar. So if, if you put in those three fields and okay, you want to narrow it down a little, so job type, I decide I just want an employee job, so I, that's all I want, I don't want those others, you can click on that. And then it's going to filter out anything that's not an employee job. And you can kind of go from the right hand side as well through those categories and select anything that you do want to see or that you don't want to see. Um, at the upper, Let's see. The upper right, just across from job search results, you see the orange box that says save this search. And if you click on there, what it will do, it'll save this search to your home page under your job search activity. So just if we go back to the home page, and then almost down there at the bottom it says job search activity. And if you go to the save search folder, you can click on that. And there's the most recent search that we did. And you can save them. So you, as you go through the advanced search, if you know it's something that you want to continually do, you can save it. And then each time you come back to the site, you can go to your save search box and click on that search. It'll refresh for the day, and it'll add new jobs that have been added to the site. So that's something that's really helpful. Um, you can set up as many as you want. Um, no problem there. And. All right, Jess, if we can go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you. OK, so these are all the fields that we just went through. Um, some tips with your advanced search. Um, more is not always better. Choosing too many search results at one time can maybe kick out jobs that you might not want to see. It's certainly something that you can do. Again, it's best to play around. Um, and again, we recommend. Um, like it says on the bottom, not getting enough results, just to select a job category, telecommuting level, and location. Um, and again, with the keywords, definitely mix them up. Um, you'll see different results, and it's, our system is going to search exactly that keyword that you put in. Um, and don't get discouraged if you if you come to the site and you're using the advanced search and you're not finding that particular day exactly what you're looking for. I just want to encourage you not to get discouraged. We do add new jobs every day, every day of the week, 365 days a year. So saving that search, um, you know, come back, run the search again, and hopefully you'll be seeing you know, more results. So don't get discouraged, but it's a very good tool um, 
for the site to use those and save those searches. So I think that's it for now on the advanced search. I'll pass it off to Jeremy to review, review the resume profile. Great. Thanks, Karen. Um, good, good information there on the advanced search options page. That's uh, definitely one of the main, main areas that you'll want to visit. Um, to help you uh, really focus your job search. So that, number one, is really important, the advanced search. And then really, the other part of the site that's uh, equally as important is your resume profile. And I'm just going to walk you through some of the steps of uh, setting up a profile, uh, what the purpose of the profile is, um, how it can be used, and kind of what the uh, uh, what the benefits are of setting up a profile. So um, first of all, uh, let's see, Jess, if you want to hop over to the site, um, there's two ways to find your resume profile. I want to show you both of those uh, from the My Flex Jobs homepage. Jeremy, are you able to see the screen moving? We're having some people who are saying they're not seeing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just changed over to the site on my end. I do see it now. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because we, we have some people who are, are not seeing it, so I wanted to make sure that, that you were able to see. So, yep. Okay. Yep, I do see it now. So I, I see the home page of the site now. So if you go to the MyFlex Jobs home. Yeah, there we are. OK, so two ways to find your uh, resume profile. So if you scroll up just a little bit, it oh, looks like you're there. So on the right-hand side, uh, the control panel, this is where you can do a lot of different things on the site. The fourth option down is resume profiles. You can click on that. And that's going to give you the option to create a new profile. It also gives you the option to edit a new profile if you have a profile started. Um, so it'll let you do that as well. So that's one place. The other place you can do is just scrolling down on this page. Again, you're on the MyFlex Jobs homepage. This is where uh, you go every time you log in to the site. This is the first page that comes up for you. There is a box uh, close to the bottom, right across the middle there. It says My Resume Profile, the blue button, Create a New Profile. So that's the other place where you can start a new profile. Or you can also edit a profile from there. So if you have current profiles, you'll be able to see them um, all lined up basically in that box right there under resume profiles. Great. And actually, if you want to go back to the PowerPoint for just, just a moment, i um, going to go through just a couple more things there, and then we'll hop back over. Perfect. So really, the purpose of your resume profile, a couple different things. First of all, it helps to automate your job search. So what that means is that we do send out job alerts by email. So if you choose to receive job alerts by email, those are generated off the information that's in your resume profile. So number one, that's what it helps you do. Um, it will also uh, allow you to apply directly with positions um, that are Flex Jobs featured employers. Some of these employers will accept resumes and profiles through the Flex Jobs database. Karen touched on that for just a moment with what that uh, image was on the job. Uh, posting, and we'll, we'll go back through that in a minute, but again, that's what it does. And then also, you can create a resume using your profile and print out a PDF copy of that resume, and then you can also upload or, or basically upload a resume to your profile. So if you already have one, you don't have to go through the steps of creating one, but if you don't have a resume, there's a great tool to create a resume um, on the site. So, Jess, if you go back over to the site, we'll just walk through the different pages of the resume profile and kind of highlight what's uh, what's important here. So this is the resume profile. So Jess had create, clicked on create a profile, and this is the page you get, and this is basically where you start uh, to work. So if you notice, right now we're on a tab that's open that's called About Me. So Jess, feel put your cursor over there. There's an About Me tab. And then basically, there's five tabs across here. So if you look just to the right of that, there's the My Job Search, Upload Resume, Build Resume, and My PDF. So each of these are a separate page, and we'll go through each one uh, individually. So you start out on the About Me page, and basically, you want to start with your profile title. Again, this is where you want to market yourself. You want to basically tell employers you know, who you are and what you're looking for. Um, if you notice to the right, there is that Tips button. And again, this will give you great tips. If you click on that, it's going to pop up. Um, some basically kind of give you recommendations on what a profile title should be, what it should include. So always a great resource there. Click on tips if you want to um, 
you know, get more explanation as to, as to what we're looking for there. So again, you'll type in your profile title there. Once you do that, you always want to click Save. So Jess, if you want to just put in a short title there. Once you have your title in how you want it, click on Save. And then that's going to save it into that section. And you see where that title is that she had just done. If you ever want to go back and edit that, easy to do. Click on Edit Title, and it'll open that box back up, and you can edit that. And again, just remember to always save um, when you make a change. Uh, the next one is your contact information. So this is where you want to um, basically provide the information of how you want employers to contact you. So email address, um, one word about email addresses is that you do want to use a professional email address, meaning um, you know, your name is great, um, or you know, just something more professional. You know, a lot, of, a lot of us have emails that may be something about our hobby or, or whatever in the email address. Um, usually if you can set up an email address that's a little bit more professional, that's a, a great recommendation. But email address there, um, phone number. If you want employers to be able to call you, that's where you would include your phone number. Um, if you have a website, um, you know a lot of people do have their own sites, or if you have a LinkedIn profile or something, you can put that link there um, in the website um, section. And then the next couple are very important. Also, this helps uh, in us doing the automated searches for you when you get the emails. Is your city, state? So you want to put in so Denver, Colorado, and um, then you can also put in your zip code. So again, that's going to help in the jobs that we send you via email, uh, that we have your city and state in there so that we're not sending you jobs that are in uh, California or Florida uh, if you live in Denver. And then again, very important to click Save once you get everything the way you want it. Uh, picture, this is optional. If you want to include a photo, you can. I would say probably you know, half, maybe a little less than half of people creating profiles do include a photo, so that's up to you. And again, a professional photo is great. That's where you would upload that. Uh, the next section, very important, privacy status of your profile. So if you click on Edit Privacy, this is going to show you the three levels that we have. So active and public, active and private, and inactive and private. So basically what we recommend is the middle option, active and private. What that means is that your profile is visible and viewable to employers with current and approved FlexJobs accounts. So public visitors cannot see any part of your profile. So that means if someone Googles your name, they're not going to see any of your information that you put on FlexJobs because it is private. Only employers that have been approved to use our site will be able to access your profile through the FlexJobs site. So active and public, so that again, that active and private is what we recommend for profiles. Active and public, the one above that, um, again, uh, employers using FlexJobs can see your information, but it's also searchable through uh, search engines also. So again, public visitors who are maybe searching your name would be able to see your profile uh, pop up through a search engine. Um, so we typically don't recommend that. We recommend the middle option so it's private just for employers of our site to see it. And then while you're working on your resume, if you're building it inactive uh, in private, basically that blocks it from anyone's view. So an employer can't see it. Uh, but if you're working on your profile, that's, that's the option you'd want so that it's not viewable until you have your profile just as you want it. And again, once you select that, you want to click Save. And also remember the Tips button over to the right. You know, If you want a little bit more explanation on those, again, the Tips button uh, is going to provide you additional information. And the last option on this page is Home Office. Again, if you edit here, you're able to select what kind of, um, uh, what kind of equipment you have in your home office, if you're on a PC, if you're on a Mac, what kind of internet connection you have, cable, DSL, um, satellite, and then also what kind of uh, office equipment. Again, optional things to enter, but it's nice to, nice to have them. And employers do sometimes look at this to see how well equipped someone's home office might be. And again, once you make those uh, selections, click Save. OK, so you're done with this page. Now you'll want to go to the next tab, which is my job search. You kind of laid out the same way. You'll want to go through these options here. So first one quickly, job categories. 
if you click on that, you have the option to enter uh, or to select five categories that you're interested in. Now, a lot of people ask, why only five? Well, that's, that's, it's five per profile. So if you have more interests than just the five categories, you can always set up another profile and select five different categories. What a lot of people will do is if they have multiple interests, say someone has a sales background and a web design background, they may create two profiles, one that focuses purely on sales, they'll select sales categories, and then they'll, they'll create another profile that will focus on the web uh, design background. And then again, they can select five different categories there and create a profile that's focusing on that interest versus their sales interest. So again, up to five categories you can select on each profile. Once you select those, you would click Save. Awesome. Next one down are Job Details. And if you click there, again, it's going to walk you right through. Checkbox is very easy. Um, so what kind of job types? You know, are you looking to be an employee? Are you looking for a freelance job, temporary, volunteer, or an internship? You can select those yet there. You can select one or you can select multiple. Type of schedule you're looking for. Is it full-time, part-time? Flexible schedule, alternative schedule, seasonal job maybe. Again, you can choose those there. The first drop down is career level. Again, are you looking for entry level? Um, are you a manager? Have you managed before? Is that the type of job you're looking for? So you can select that there. Again, education level, pretty self-explanatory. It's going to have some different education options. You know, whatever you've, you've completed and you want to list for education. Uh, desired pay, this is optional. You know, if you know you want to make $20 an hour or $600 an hour, which would be even better, you can select that. But again, this is optional. You don't have to fill in that category, but if you want to do that, you can. And then other compensation and benefits, again, that, um, you know, if you want a job where they give you lunch every Friday, you know, or ice cream, you know, you can enter that there. That's, that would be another benefit or compensation. Again, optional category to, uh, or optional uh, uh, to fill in there. But again, save once you fill in all your details. Awesome. Next one, job flexibility preferences. Again, if you click on edit, it will bring up the options for you. So what type of flexibility are you interested in? Um, basically, you can choose flexible schedule, part-time schedule, telecommuting, freelance. So if you're looking just for a telecommuting job like we talked about before, you would just want to have the telecommuting um, option selected. Um, so if you choose telecommuting, then the next question, the drop-down, all telecommuting, any level, and it has the other options there. And then again, uh, what Karen touched on a little bit, willing to travel, yes, no, or maybe. So select which one is applicable to you, and then save. Great, almost done with this section. Last one, availability and schedule. Again, you can set it, you know, if you're, you're flexible on when you can start, um, or if you want to start immediately, if you need to give two weeks notice, those options are there. Um, what schedules are you available? You can click what you need there, multiple select if you'd like. And then hours. Again, flexible, or there's different options. And again, you can save that once you're done. So that completes that second job tab of my job search, or sorry, profile tab of my job search. Next one is upload resume. So if you have a resume that you want to use, this is where you would upload it. Um, so you click Upload Resume, the tab that Jess is on, that first option there, Add Resume. And then you can click Browse, and that's going to browse your computer, and you can find your uh, copy of your resume. Once you find that, you can save it. So that's going to upload the resume to your profile. So now you can see uh, current file type, and it has the file name there. So a PDF is great to upload. Um, a Word doc, uh, .doc is a great file to upload. Um, you want to try and stay away from a .docx, which is uh, you know, a, a newer version of Word. Um, if you can save it as a .doc, it's preferable, just because the HR person who's maybe opening your resume may not have the capability to open a .docx. 
but if you save it as a .doc, pretty much anybody using Word or Microsoft Office can open that. So just a tip, um, but it, those are probably the two best formats, a PDF or a .doc uh, to use as your file type. If you want to change your resume, you can always click Edit. You can select Delete. That will take away that file, and you can browse and find a new resume if that's what you need to do. And then below that is uh, upload a work sample. So again, if you have work samples that you want to put on the site, um, you know, if you're a designer and you have a brochure or if you have something else that you'd like to upload, you can click on work sample. works exactly the same way. And you would be able to browse your computer, find that sample, that work sample, and then you can um, click on that and then save. And it will basically save that for you. Again, same, same thing as the uh, resume profile or sorry, as, as uploading your resume. Okay, so that's it for that tab. If you have your resume, that's where you want to go to upload it. The next one is build resume. So if you don't have a resume, this would be your option, is to build your resume. And again, we'll just touch on these quickly, but it's um, you know really just the process of building your resume. So summary objective, again, this is where you want to say, what's your objective? You know, What are you looking for? And again, this is where you would type that in. And don't forget about the tips button that's up there. If you need um, ideas or help with what you should put in there, this will give you a really good idea. Once you have that in, click Save, and that will save it for you. And then just quickly going through these work experience, this is where you would enter that. So again, pretty basic. What position, your employer, employer's website, you know, the dates you were there, and then the job details. So really exact same format as you would create a resume with. And that's what this is doing. And then once you get um, through the um, through that section, you've got the information in as you want it, make sure you click Save. Yep, and then you can add, add your next job there simply by doing that. The next option is Education. So you can add your education. Typically, again, on a resume, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, depending on where you're at in your career, it could be, you know, your high school, uh, it could be college, it could be the advanced degrees where you went to school. But this is where you'd be able to include all that information, um, area of study, location, the dates you were there, and if you want to add any details. So again, just really going through and building that resume uh, is what you're doing here. And then definitely save each one you go through. Next one, skills. If you want to add skills, say, you know, if it's, um, you know, Microsoft Excel, you could add in, you know, Excel, and then you can select your skill level at the drop-down. So any skills that you would want to list on your resume profile, that's where you'd do it. Next one, languages. Again, if you speak any languages, uh, foreign languages, say Spanish, French, any language that you'd want to list on there, again, you can you can enter it and then select your level of proficiency and then save. Next one is certifications and memberships. Again, professional memberships, maybe certifications you've gotten in your field, great place to enter them here. So whatever that may be, you can enter it there and then click save. Perfect. And then uh, last one on this page, uh, honors and awards. Again, same idea. You can list whatever that was. Uh, you know, if you want to list the year that you received that, perfect. That would be a great thing to put on your resume profile. And then you can click Save. Great. So that's everything on that tab. The next tab, My PDF. So here, basically, you can create a PDF document of your profile. So everything you just entered, you can create a pre PDF document. So then you can save that to your computer, and you can use that to apply, um, uh, you know, to jobs outside of the site. So jobs that take you to maybe the employer's website to apply, you can use that PDF that um, uh, that was created and downloaded for you. So again, you can save that somewhere on your computer so you have it, and then again, apply for jobs. Um, Outside of Flex Jobs, when it takes you to the employer site, you can use that. One other thing here to see what your profile looks like. 
above on actually each of these tabs uh, above is a, a option to say view my profile. If you click there, that's going to show you what your profile looks like. And again, since we only added you know very limited information, uh, this is what it looks like with that information added. But so it's got your name, has your uh, uh, title, profile title. And then it's going to go through your executive summary, the work experience, education, everything that you input will be here. So, um, and then also a summary of your job search details will be down there at the bottom as well. And again, it's going to list out everything that you had entered. And uh, this gives you a really good idea what your profile looks like on FlexJobs. Chris, that's really all the areas of the profile that you want to go through um, to basically make it complete. Um, Jess, if you go back to the PowerPoint for just a couple more slides. So Karen had mentioned this briefly, that there are, um, there are two types of employers on FlexJobs. There are those that are featured employers. Uh, where you saw the little uh, the star and the, the FJ for flex jobs, and then there are what we call external employers. A featured employer is an employer who has come directly to flex jobs and posted their job on the site themselves. Again, screened and approved by our staff before they're allowed to post. These employers are able to browse and search resume profiles. So if you have your profile set to active, uh, active and private, like I say, that's the preferred option. That employer is going to be able to see your information. They're going to be able to look through your profile, and they can contact you if they're interested in you for a position. Also, on the other side of that, if they're a featured employer who is accepting applications through FlexJobs, you'll see that blue button to the right that says apply for this job. This employer is accepting resumes through the FlexJobs site. You can send them, or your profile when you apply for that job will be sent to that employer. So the profile that you just filled out had your resume attached to, that's going to go to that employer um, when you choose that apply for this job option. When you click apply for this job, it's going to also bring up an option where you can enter a cover letter. So you can enter a cover letter for that employer, and then it's going to ask you which profile you want to send. So if you have multiple profiles, maybe this is a sales job, you can select your sales profile, and then that's what would be sent to that employer. So again, another great way to use your profile is that. Um, other types of employers we have on the site are what we call external employers. These are employers that our job researchers have found. And again, they've done the same screening process, making sure they're a legitimate employer and their jobs have flexibility. So again, external employers have been screened by our staff. You'll see this blue button that says to learn more or apply, go to original job posting. So what that button is going to do is it's going to take you directly to the employer's site to apply. So the employer may have their own job application for you to fill out, or they may be asking for you to send a resume. So if you have a resume, you can send that directly to them. Or if you don't, but you created one on our site and you downloaded the PDF, you can send them that PDF as a resume. So that's the difference between the two, and that's how that would work. Um, so going on to the next slide, just about done. So tips. Uh, for uh, setting up your resume profile. As I mentioned before, you can create more than one. Um, so if you have multiple types of jobs you're interested in, you can choose and to set up a profile for each one of those. And again, you can be specific. Maybe it's um, you know a web design profile, a sales profile, and a writing profile. You can do that. You can attach different resumes to each one. You can select different job categories for each one. And again, those would be separate profiles. So depending on your interests, um, you can you can do that, and it uh, it does make the site really flexible in that in that way that you can uh, be seen by the employer under the web design category in your profile, or under sales, or under writing, whatever the case may be. And just a couple more tips. Um, again, filling out as much information as possible, just giving the employer a really clear view of who you are, what you're looking for, very important. Um, again, setting that profile status, that is important because you want to make sure that, um, that you're active and private, meaning FlexJobs approved employers are able to see you. That's really important status setting. So again, you want to check that if you have a profile out there just to see what your privacy status is. 
Um, and again, you know, being mindful when you're selecting job categories and job de details, making sure that's where your interests are, that's what you're looking for. Um, very important uh, sections to fill out. But um, I think that's about it for the profile setup. Okay, it is. We've got one other option or one other resource for you on the site. There's a basically a 10 minute video. So when you're in the profile and you're setting up your profile, there's a video that you can go to to watch um, if you've forgotten anything or you just want a little more detailed explanation of that. So again, it's on the right side, on the right hand toolbar, and again, it shows each step. And you can go back and reference that at any time. Um, so again, another great resource. Also, this webinar will be downloaded and put on the site within a couple of days, and you can use this webinar as a resource as well when you want to go uh, back and get more clarification on something or um, just to review uh, kind of what we talked about today. So that's everything that I have. Jess, um, if we have any questions, we would uh, definitely be happy to take those now. All right, wonderful. So one of the questions that we had come through um, is when we when you set up multiple profiles, will an employer be able to see more than one profile for a member? Good question. Um, so usually when an employer is looking at candidates, they are typically looking under categories. So an employer will be searching for candidates under the sales category. So if you have multiple profiles, one of them happens to be under sales, that employer will see you in your sales profile under that category when they're searching for someone. Um, they will not see your profile for web design. So they won't see that you have multiple profiles set up. Um, you know, if that same employer happens to be searching for a web designer, then yeah, they would see your web design profile as well. But they're not, by seeing one of your profiles, they won't see that you have multiple profiles set up. All right, great. Um, we have a question about the resume profile setup. If you are uploading a resume, do you need to fill out the build a resume area? Uh, great question. Um, you do not. Um, really, it's an either or. So if you have a resume, there really isn't a need to go through and fill out the resume profile uh, section. If you upload your resume, that is what the employer wants to see. Really, it would be repetitive information if you did both, um, so you don't need to. So if you have a resume, I suggest uploading that. If you don't have one, then I would suggest going through and filling out the resume profile, um, resume detail section. And it is, we're getting a couple of questions here. People are asking if it's important to have a complete profile. And the answer to that is absolutely, um, because if you come across a job that requires you apply with the Reflex Jobs profile and it is incomplete, you will send an incomplete profile to that employer. So you want to make sure when you when you first get started and, and when you're working on Flex Jobs that you do have an entirely active, completed resume profile, at least one on the site. Um, we do have a question as well on this. Um, we have this going on right now. So right now I have this profile that shows active, and then I have a profile that shows incomplete. Um, so can we go through why incomplete would be showing up on this profile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, so this, yeah, actually go back to the, the previous page you were just on there for just a second. Um, great example. So you can easily tell. So if you are on your MyFlexJobs homepage, you come down to your MyResume profile section, if you check the status, you can see that one is active and one is incomplete. So that's always good to know. You'll you'll know what your status of your profiles are. The incomplete profile, if you click on edit, it will tell you what sections you're missing. So you see the blue box at the top. In order to activate your profile, the following fields are required at a minimum. So again, it's going to direct you to the page. So okay, the first one that's missing on the About Me page, missing profile title. So First one you'd want to do is fill in your profile title. So again, out about me tab, profile title, get that filled in, save it, then that goes away. The next one you're missing, my job search tab is the is where it is, and it's under job category. So if you go to my job search tab, you're missing the job categories. So again, you want to click on the edit categories and add your categories. 
the next one there, just for example, again, still on the My Job Search tab. Something is missing under Job Details. So again, you're on the right tab, My Job Search. Look down for the section, Job Details. Click on Edit. And it looks like it was missing Career Level, Education Level. Once you fill those in, then that uh, error box goes away. So that's how you know what's missing. It will always be at the top in that blue box, and then it will direct you where to go to finish filling out that information. So that should have completed that profile. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question as to whether or not you can share accounts with someone else. Uh, no, typically not. Uh, the reason for that is because on the Flex Jobs account, uh, it's going to build profiles for one person. So you can build multiple profiles for the one person who is the account owner or the account holder uh, because their name is going to be associated with all of the pro profiles. So applying for a job, again, it's just going to be the person who owns that account, who set up that account, and their name is going to be associated with it. So really, sharing an account doesn't really work. Um, we definitely give uh, Discounts for referrals, which is a great program. Actually, you're on a perfect page for that. If you look down to the right, just below the control panel, there's an option to refer a friend to Flex Jobs. Uh, it's a pretty cool program because what it does is if you click on that, it's going to bring up a, a pop-up where you can send a friend an email. It's going to give them a 30% discount if they sign up. Uh, when they do sign up and pay for a Flex Job subscription, it gives you a free month as being the person who referred them. Um, so it is, it is a good referral program. You can get uh, additional time for yourself on the site by referring someone. Um, again, once they sign up for a FlexJobs account, and then that person gets a discount, either on the one month, the three month, or the one year. Um, so that's, that's a great way to um, get someone else involved in the site if you know that they're looking for a job. All right. Great. So is there a way to upload more than one resume on the resume profiles is a question that we have. And that is absolutely each resume profile has. It's, it's an independent profile. So these are not linked together. So if you make a profile example for this experienced writer and you have a resume that is your writing resume, you can attach it to this one. If you have one for web design, you can attach it to this one. So you can absolutely customize these. They are independent of each other. So um, it's important to make sure that you understand that each of these are not translating. There. So you can't put information on one and have it transfer to the other. You want to build them each independently. Um, we have a person who is asking if uh, we could give more information on the skills tab and skills test. Sure, I'll take that one. Um, there are numerous skills tests that you can take on the site. Um, you'll find right there is a way to access them if you click take a skills test. It'll take you to the page. There's um, just some basic information here that you can read through when, when you get there. But there's um, different categories here and they each have, um, if you click like Jess just did that little arrow, it'll bring down all the different types of tests. What you can do, you can take these tests to make yourself stand out to employers. You, what will be shown, if you get a score of 70% or above on the skills test, it will show in your resume profile. So it, anything below a 70%, you'll be able to find it in your skills results, your test results, but it won't be visible to anyone. Um, you can take the tests as many times as you want. You just have to wait 24 hours between each testing. Um, so, and you can delete any test, if you, even if you get an 85 and you think you can do better, you can go in and delete that test. So, um, in addition to you going in and doing those skills tests on your own, sometimes the featured employers will recommend within their job application, they'll say, hey, we want you to take um, the English grammar test or English spelling test. And they'll give lists of the skills tests that they would like you to go ahead and submit with your application. Um, it's always a recommendation. It's not something that you have to do. Um, but since the you know, employer is asking to see those results, it's a very good idea to take the, 
the skills result, the skills test that they're asking for. So this is the page where you would actually select the test that you're wanting to take. Um, just if you scroll up a little bit, um, there might not be any. You would have actually had to take in a test. If you, within the control panel, on the right-hand side, you'll see where it says skills test. If you click the little drop-down box, you can re go this way too. So you'll see take a skills test. You'll also see if you have taken any tests, you can click on your results. And if you had some particular tests up here, you would there would be an area for you to delete them if you wanted to delete them. Um, but they're a really good way to help your uh, qualifications stand out, and it's a good idea to look through those types of tests. There's you know, a wide range and a variety of, of tests that you can take on there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, we have a question. How quickly are job posts? things removed after positions are filled. Um, I'd be happy to take this one because I actually help with the database cleaning. So we actually go through the database all the time. So we, um, we're constantly looking at the database and removing positions and adding new positions. So um, as a job seeker, if you ever come across a position that is that you're having issues with or that the link is having issues, just for example, we'll just take this one arbitrarily. There is an area at the bottom. You can save this job to your account. You can click that you've applied to it so that you can keep track of where you've applied. Or you can also use this flag this job. If you click this, it will pull up a box that you can fill in and tell us why you're concerned about the job listing. And that will send us an alert with the link. And we will respond back to you and let you know what we find out, if the job has expired, if the you know employer's website was down. Um, or if there are any other issues that we're aware of or any other information that you're looking to seek, this is the best way to get in contact with us about the jobs. But we do go through and clean the database constantly. So it is, it's, um, as soon as we know a position is no longer available, we will remove it from the site. Um, so another question that we have is, why do we require dates on the resume profile under the Build Resume section? Sure, I'll take that <clears throat> quickly. Really, it's just um, you know mainly because it's uh, you know a traditional resume um, format. Um, so again, that's that's just how people are used to seeing it. Again, with uh, the years that you attended, um, really, you know, no other reason beyond that. Um, Jeff or Karen, any other ideas on on that one? The employers prefer seeing it. <clears throat> is what I've understood. Um, if an employer is looking at a, a resume without dates, that can be just as much of a red flag as having the dates. Um, mm -hmm. So there are, are definitely ways um, that employers, they know for age discrimination, a lot of people don't like to have that information up. Um, obviously, it can have the, the flip response without having those dates up as well. So at this point, we do have them required. If it's something you absolutely do not want on your resume profile, um, definitely you can attach an, a resume, and then you don't have to put the dates on that attached resume. Um, but you would not be able to use the, the build a resume on our site to, to do that. So um, the one other thing, since we're going to get wrapping up here, we've got a couple of minutes left. Um, there's a couple other things I'd like to highlight about the site um, while we've got you guys on here. One of the important things to look at um, definitely very regularly is the community and blog section of our website. This is where we post all sorts of information about things like news and job trends, um, job search activities. We've got things like cover letter tips, um, different job resources. This is where the webinars and videos, including this one, will be posted here. And any previous that we've done um, are listed here, so it's a great place to have um, have things uh, up as far as you know getting familiar with telecommuting and getting familiar with how best to use flex jobs um, additionally a big thing that you can utilize from the my flex jobs homepage is the special partner offers so we have a lot of career partners that we utilize and that we recommend um, that offer discounts to our flex jobs members so as a member, you're able to get um, reduced prices on any of the things that they offer. So that's definitely a good place to check out if you have not already. And then um, 
last but not least, if you have any additional questions that we were unable to answer on the webinar, you are always welcome to contact our client services department. And so our information here is the and I apologize, there's a, a gentleman who's talking about not being able to get to their questions and we've just run out of time. So um, you're welcome to send us an email or you can give us a call on our, our phone number here. So here's our contact information. So you can contact us by the phone number. You can also send us an email. This gives you an email contact form. And we would be happy to answer any questions that you have from there. So. You guys have a great day. We wish you all the best in your job search. And um, again, we'll be sending out a recording of this uh, email tomorrow to let you go ahead and look through this if you have any additional questions. Thank you again, Jeremy and Karen, for being here and answering those questions and showing us how to, um, how to answer uh, any of those questions with the new website. Have a great day. Bye-bye.